American things I never got used to. Very interesting to see what we got in this video and see what kind of things she was experiencing in America that she couldn't get used to as a European. Before we do get into this, appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. Let's see what we got. Hey, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about the things I never got used to while living abroad in the United States, even okay. though I lived there for about five years. Oh, lived there for five years? Oh, okay. Interesting. Wait, so you never got used to I never things? got used to in the United States was the national anthem. So if, if you don't know in the United States, okay. when you do the national anthem, of course you sing it, but you have to stand up and put your heart, right hand over your heart. Right. And I never really got used to it because I didn't <coughs> oh, know me. what I should do because I was never American, but I was living in the United oh. States. So I didn't know if I should do the same thing. You know what? That makes sense. Okay. I, I, was, I was interested to see where she was going with this, but that does make sense. She's not from america so she felt like kind of awkward you know what i mean but you know what i found out with america is it was in a video the other day and they're very accepting of like other people living in america and calling themselves americans so hey just go and do it man you're living in america you know you can you can start doing it well don't take my word for it i'm not american but <laughs> you know because they do it because they are american so what am i supposed to do I always stood up because I think Jordan. it's really important to respect Why the not? national anthem. So even if you don't put your right hand over your heart because you don't feel like, you know, you, you're from that country, so you don't feel like you should do that, you should at least stand up. I feel like it's a sign of respect. Even right, if you're I'll do it. Stand up during the national anthem. But doing you putting your right hand over your heart is another thing. You know, it's more personal. It shows, like, you know, you're... You understand and you believe in what the country is about. And right. You just visit it. Maybe you know you don't. You know it's not your country. So just I felt like I I didn't know if I should do it. But then I was like you know uh, the United States is really important to me. You know it's part. It's not my. You life. know what the thing is? She was living there for five years though. Like if I was just visiting, you know what? I'd probably join in anyway because I think it'll be cool. But if I was just like just some random Brit visiting america i would they wouldn't join in right if they were just visiting but if you're living there you may as well you know what i mean you may why not you're living there now you're pretty much american country but kind of because i lived there for so long and you know it's part of me so i always put also my right hand over my heart okay. but it might sound silly but i always felt a little more like an imposter because i felt <laughs> like it wasn't my I shouldn't, yeah, I don't know, it wasn't my right to put my right hand over my heart because I was right. not American, so I don't even understand everything in the national anthem, you know? Interesting. Language. Okay. So one of the things that I had a hard time getting used to is the fact that the English language doesn't have two words for the word you. So in France we do, we have tu and we have vous. Tu, vous. So tu is more like familiar, it's usually more for like friends, family. Right. And vu is more polite, it's more respectful, and usually you will use it for people you don't know or people with a higher statue than you do. So for okay. example, you will say vu to your teachers, to your uh, parents, uh, to your friends' parents, or people you don't know in the streets, or you know if you go to like a building to ask questions. So I don't know, vous. Wherever you go, you you say vu to the person. So I think that was really weird to me, just because, for example, teachers you have to say vu in French. Like if you tu say tu to a teacher in some cases like they would really not like it you could get right. around it especially in high school when you go to college it might be different it depends the relationship you have with your teachers but in high school for example you will say vous to your teachers all the time you can't just say tu to a teacher you know okay so that was really weird to me because in the united states you only say you so i remember yeah. being in college and i wanted to talk to my teachers and i just felt really weird saying you to my teachers but like it's the only word you can use i mean but like wait 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 wait, wait. What, like, you said, like, you called the teacher, you, like, you, come here, I do my work. <laughs> no, you'd be like, wait, what would I say in school? Miss? Miss? Sir? Yeah, miss and sir, right, in school? Until I got to college and it was like, you. <laughs> I felt weird. I felt like I needed to say something else because I felt like I was being rude. I don't know. I just remember asking people, like, is there another way for me to say that? So yeah, Wait, I don't know. It's what just a little saying? thing that is weird when you go just call it to you. Is when you're used to you know making a difference between. Two I feel like someone's played a prank on her, and said, "Oh, you want to ask for the teacher say you," because you don't just say to the teacher you, like you. 
Is that what she say? Like calling teachers you? Words and here it's just like the same word. You don't have a difference between that. Okay. Alcohol. What she can't get used to it being under twenty so ones. Can't I drink never it. Completely get used to in the United States is alcohol. So right. the laws around alcohol are really different between France and the United States. So it's weird to get used to it when you're not um when you grow up in a country and then you go to another country and then the laws are different. So yeah, you, you of course. Have a hard time getting used to them. So the first thing is that in France the legal age to drink is eighteen, but in the United States it's twenty one. Right. So that was weird to me because I was legal in France, but I wasn't legal in the United States. Yeah, that's and trippy. And I had to wait many more years, I mean many, until I was 21 to get legal again. And that was that really is trippy. And I wasn't getting used to it because <laughs> I was like, I'm legal in France, but in the United States I'm not. And it's just weird and I was kind of annoyed by it. But I mean, it's normal. You have to respect every country. Right. Different, but just weird. I'm pretty sure. Americans were drinking before 21. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure. Hey, listen, you ain't gonna be going to college, university, and not be drinking, going to the parties. You know what I mean? And then also, in France, you can drink outside. So if you go to the Eiffel Tower, you'll see people drink every night on the grass. Okay. But in the United States, so public drinking is a lot more illegal, I guess, in many states than in France. Like, right. There are a lot more laws around it. You know what? I don't even know the exact laws in the UK, but I'm pretty sure you can't just go around drinking. I'm pretty sure. But then again, like, you can go to a park and have drinks. Or, like, people just do it and just don't get caught. I don't know. I actually don't know the exact laws. <laughs> I need to worry about it anyway, because I don't really drink, like, going out anyway. Like if I if I if I'm drinking this in my house, someone else's house, in a garden, or like at a bar or pub or whatever, right? Um, I think in France it's just had you can drink outside, but you should not get intoxicated or really drunk. Right, then okay. You could get in trouble, but if you just drink outside, that's fine. So yeah, that's something that is weird. And the last thing, which is the main thing that I never really got used to it because it's the one that I had to face more times. Is the fact that you have to show your ID so much more in the United States than in France. Okay. So for oh, yeah. bars, like I went to the bars so many times during college and I had to show my ID every single time. And that was so annoying to me because in France, like I never have to show my IDs in bars, like never. Yo, to be fair though, you're young. <laughs> I would think you would have to show ID. I think it'd be crazy if you like kind of look older and was getting ID'd. But that does happen in America as well that I've seen. It's like, there's literally people 50 years old getting ID. 60 years old getting ID. Like, you could, you could tell I'm not 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know what? Just take it as a compliment, man. They're, they're just saying you look under 21. So, that was so weird because now I never had to do it. And now I had to do it every time. Right. And at first, I was like, okay, they all asked me for my ID a few times. But, but then, then they get you used know, to your face. They me like 10 times. They know who I am. They know I'm 21. So, they are Excuse me, 10 times? How much are you drinking? 10 times? <laughs> Am I going to ask me? No, for three years, every single time, they ask me for my ID. So yeah. Yo, 10 really drinks and I'll be dead. Especially because I didn't have like an actual like ID in the US and my passport. So I was so scared to lose it, you know, because if you lose your passport, like you're in big trouble. Yeah. So bringing your passport to a bar, like you don't feel it's really safe. You're scared to lose it. And yeah, so I never really got used to bringing my passport to the bar. Get like a okay, driving so license, a professional. Two things that are a little more basic, but the first thing is air conditioning. Oh. 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 You know what? I am moving house. And it's going to be my own house. So I there's a very high chance that I'm going to get air conditioning installed. I don't know how much it is. But listen, I'm so jealous that you guys have it, especially for when, like, when summer's hitting. Bro, yeah, I'm going to do it, dude. Like, right now, air conditioning in the UK makes no sense because right now it's autumn, fall. Yeah, so it's cold. <laughs> so we don't want air conditioning right now, but, but summer, like, it can't get hot in, inside. It really can. So I never got used to air conditioning. Um, I completely understand why air conditioning is really cool. I mean, especially when I went to Arizona and Utah, it was so hot outside. Right. And having air conditioning in your car, in stores, or anywhere, it was so nice. Otherwise, you probably will die of heat because it's just so hot outside. It's that hot. You can't really handle it. 
but in the in the United States you have air conditioning pretty much everywhere and in Pennsylvania it wasn't even hot outside and you have air conditioning in stores or even when it was cold you still have air conditioning in stores and that was just so weird to me and wait never oh wait is that <laughs> what you guys just never turn it off so you're telling me when it's cold in America you still got air conditioning blasted <laughs> Because every single time, you know, you go outside, it's warm, so you put on a dress, a t-shirt, right. and then you go to Walmart, and you literally freeze. Like, you have to bring <laughs> a jacket, sometimes a scarf, or you literally freeze. I remember so What, is it that crazy? I forgot that, um, you know, we will go to a store, so I will go out in a dress, we will go to right. Walmart, and I could not spend too much time in the store because I was so cold. Mad. So I don't understand why they blasted so much you know like i can put a little bit of air conditioning but they blasted like it's literally so cold in the <laughs> fitting rooms how can you not get used so to fitting the rooms thing are fitting what's different about that so it's a weird subject but i never really got used to it because in fact fitting rooms they are pretty much like they're open you can just walk in and do your thing they will usually right. sometime have like a person in front of them that will just ask you how many clothes you have before you go in but yep. they are open and sometimes you won't even have that person. It just depends. But in the United States, fitting rooms are usually closed. They are locked. And you have to ask an employee to open them for you so you can change. Huh? And that was really weird to me because I never was used to it, you know. So every single time, I will forget. Wait, so every single fitting room in every single shop, you have to find an employee, ask them to open up a locked door to try on like a t-shirt or something. What? See, I don't really use fitting rooms anyway, because I'm just, I'm that kind of shopper that just buys and goes, and then just, you know, most of the stuff I just get online anyway. And if it fits, it fits. If it's not, I can't be bothered, right? But yo, that's kind of crazy, bro. Is that, is that like to prevent theft? It probably is, right? It probably is. It probably is. And I will walk to the fitting room and like try to open it and be like, oh, that's true. They're locked. I have to ask an employee. So, I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's just something I really never got used to. Right. And Interesting. I just remember one day I was in my changing and I wanted to get out of my, you know, fitting room. But they locked you in? my friend when I was, you know, trying on. And I do that all the time in France. So I just got out of there and right behind me, the door locked. And when I heard, like, you know, you hear the lock close, you're like, oh shit. I forgot. So it's like <laughs> they are trying to something on, you know, you don't feel completely comfortable, you don't know if you like it, and you have to cross the store to go ask an employee to bring <laughs> the fitting room because you got outside. And Yo, what if you left the fitting room in like, I don't know, you're trying on boxes and you just got your underwear on? <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. You look behind you. So yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal, but I just think it's something funny. It's right. Like a little cultural difference that we have. And Interesting. That really never like that one. It's now the end of this video. I hope you Yo, that was good. Enjoyed that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you give a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. Also, let me know if you guys have been locked out of a fitting room half naked. <laughs> I'm live every single day on Twitch on TV before slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.